<laughs> yourself there, Mark. Well, oh, better than earlier. Yeah, I, 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 I brushed my hair this time. So, uh, so John, as we um, participate in another guild event, this will be uh, number four, which kind of seems almost miraculous that this is still going, isn't it, from the very yeah, first one we did? I remember, <laughs> I remember this, the feeling of being on the roller coaster, and we're, we're about to go over the edge, and the first one's like, can we really do this? And, oh, God, you know, it was just amazing. It really was. Uh, I think we had, um, by April 15th, I think we had three students enrolled. <laughs> and I think, yeah. I think, I think by Mark, by May 1st, um, by May 1st, I think we had a total of, um, oh, I think it was, uh, five students as of May 1st. Wow. Wow. And then, wow. And then we were wondering if we were going to lose $130,000. You know, oh, wow. Do you remember that? I, I remember there was a pivot point. Like, you had to put the money down, and if yeah. you didn't put the money down, you'd lose the venue. Yeah. But if you went ahead with a venue and didn't have any students, then you lose the money. It's like, wow, that's a step of faith there. I, I really, I do get inspired by how you take these steps of faith. So some people say, whoa, whoa. what is he doing? But so you, when you know God's telling you to do it, you do it. And, and look what happens. Yeah, I'm not sure it's just me taking steps of faith. I think it's the people behind me saying, I'm with you. We'll, we'll go all the way to the wall with you. And I think that you've been wow. able to help me do that. So I appreciate that. So sure. this year, this year is completely different. Um, we've been, of course, at the castle up at Mohunk for the last uh, three years. Yeah. And uh, this year, we decided to do something unprecedented, which I kind of like. It's changing things up. It gives us an opportunity to trust God in a whole new venue. You, you would think yeah. that after three years, things were running smoothly. We got it all <laughs> going the way we wanted to. Uh-huh. And now we're, now we're doing this. Um, uh-huh. But we're going to be at the Grand Canyon of the East up in western New York. Yeah. Um, it's where Lamplighter moved this new headquarters. And... Uh, I, I think students are in for um, something completely different this time. Um, I, I loved talking with you, Kathy Buchanan, and Todd to Steve yesterday. That was a fun, fun conversation. So, <laughs> so what would the students expect this year um, to be different than in years past? However, before you say that, let, let me just mm-hmm. back up a little bit. And we usually have one script writer, teaching script writer. Mm-hmm. This year we're having two. Right. And you, you, t- you talked me into that. So why are, why are we having two scriptwriter teachers this year? I'm glad you asked that question. Okay. <laughs> and actually, I was thinking through it as uh, with Ms. Howard today, thinking of, oh, wow, look how this worked out. Uh, what are we going to do different? Are we, are we, can we talk about the Are You From the Lab? Can we talk about that? Yeah, go right ahead. That is really exciting. That's just me totally different this year. So what we're going to do is we're going to have these um, audio drama labs. So that means if you want to get involved with any aspect of storytelling, whether it's focused on audio drama, but if you're going to get into film or watch a story, whatever, you're going to learn something from this lab. But here's what it is. We're going to take um, all the students and break them up into groups of, say, uh, seven, eight, maybe at the most ten. Okay, so you've got all these groups. And each group is going to produce an audio drama from start to finish, a five- to seven-minute audio drama. So we're going to take you through the writing. We're going to take you through uh, the acting and directing. We're going to take you through sound design and through music. And at the end, you're going to have a five to seven minute audio drama produced by you and your friends. You can take home with you. You can be learning about the project. And what are you mentoring you in the process? It's like an apprenticeship, a hands-on apprenticeship model. So the cool thing about this is, so you've got ten groups of ten, say for Max, because that's that's kind of Max. But let's say you have that. Okay, if I'm coaching you in writing, I'm kind of sliding into the room, pouring to the room there. It's just me. It's like that's a lot. So we have two writers now. It's Kathy and me working through the room and kind of help them, help them brainstorm, help them that kind of thing, just help them the process along. When we get to sound design, same thing happens. You've got John Doris, who's done a lot of stuff for Adventures in Odyssey and a lot of stuff for Discovery Channel and all that kind of stuff. Then you've got Todd Steve, who's done some amazing sound design as well. John writes music as well. But you've got two of these guys that know that sound production. They're going to be working through the room as, the, as you're putting together the soundtracks, as you're putting together the sound design. We just go, we'll be hovering in the room, just being around there to help you through the process reduce your very own audio drama, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Awesome. And, and Todd, Todd, the scene, he worked, did he work in Chronicles of Narnia and Les Mis Uh, no. <laughs> but, you know, it was a good track. So he worked on, he worked on the Left Behind series. Oh, that's uh, it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. right. Uh, John and both worked on Adventures in Odyssey. And uh, John Doric composed a lot of music. In fact, he won awards for his music. And he did, uh, oh. he did uh, a PBS special, that kind of thing. <laughs> We're, we're 
looking forward to having John Thornton. We're going to miss that on Campbell this year. Oh, He'll yeah. be back in yeah. 2015, yeah. as well as Dr. Robbie Zachariah will be with us. But um, this year, John, I'm not sure you even know some of the um, additions we have to the Guild this year. So we've added we've added culinary this year. Yeah. And the, the, teach, the teacher who's teaching culinary was uh, taught by the, the gourmet chef himself who used to cook for President Bush. Wow. He'll be teaching at the Guild this year for those that are interested in not just how to cook, but how to cook creatively and yeah. uh, creatively within the, the creative disciplines of biblical ideas. And so that's, that's never been done before at the Guild. Really? That. This is fascinating. Okay. Well, well think, think about it. When um, the Queen of Sheba came to Solomon, uh-huh. you remember what she saw? What was the oh, first she thing she saw? She, well, she saw just all the servants and all the, all the, the, the pageantry. The, the, I mean, just she saw the meals, or are you, are you kind of fishing yeah. for that? Is that what you're doing? Okay, you saw the hamburgers from all over. <laughs> no. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Saw, this, this is what the text says. The text okay. says that when she saw Solomon in all his glory, she saw the way her servants served, yeah. the way they dressed, ah, the food okay, right. they prepared. Yeah. There we you know, go. So, okay, yes. You know, one of the things that um, Debbie and I, we love doing is when, when we have guests over, she likes to cook, but we like to cook creatively so that we actually oh, cook yeah. within colors. There's certain colors yeah. on the table. Yeah. Um, it, it, so we want the Guild students this year to also experience the culinary um, aspect of the right. Guild. We have Dr. John Waller coming. Um, he mm-hmm. was my seminary professor, and I have been eternally influenced by him. Um, he taught wow. me how to study the Bible, and he taught me how the Bible means. And those who have never been under Dr. John Lawler's teaching before and ever heard him speak, this mm-hmm. in itself, if you just came to hear biblical theology, he's going to teach um, Proverbs, the principles of Proverbs on Sunday. And so it's going to start on Sunday. So those that come, please don't miss Sunday. That's the Prius. That's the day before the actual guild starts, yeah. but Sunday's a big day for everybody. When you get there on Sunday, be rested, ready to go on Monday morning. But on, um, Dr. John Waller is going to be also teaching um, the Torah as a theological symphony. And that mm-hmm. is going to be amazing. Now, John, this is why I'm bringing this up with regards to what you're doing, script writing. So Dr. Waller and I were talking about, you know, what's the, what's the purpose of the guilt? So what would mm-hmm. you say, John? What, what's the mission of the guilt? I, I don't expect you to quote it exactly, but what would you say is the essence and mission of the guilt? Wow, I mean, you had a wonderful mission statement, which I can't call to mind right now. It was great. I should have thought you know. <laughs> But it's, it's really a, my personal take on it, and you're going to articulate much better than me. But uh, for, for my, my personal take on it is, uh, it's, it's about raising up the next generation of artisans for, for creative excellence in the arts for the glory of God. And that excites me. I can't tell you how much that excites me. So mm-hmm. that, that's, that's my take on it. So you can articulate it better. Well, I, I think what we're trying to do is is give students a, um, what their appetite, to give them a passionate, um, a passionate and relentless pursuit of it, an agonizing pursuit of excellence. But it comes mm-hmm. from Second Peter chapter 1. Um, God's given us everything that we need for life and better godliness according to his mm-hmm. divine power. Now think of this. Is this true? Has God really given us everything that we need for life and godliness? And he says he has, and so I took mm-hmm. I take him at his word. Mm-hmm. Then it says this. It says, according to the full intimate knowledge of him who's called us to glory and excellence. So God's called us, each one of us, each one of his children, he's mm-hmm. called us to live a life of glory and excellence. Okay? He wants us to reflect his glory in our lives. By which he is also given us great and magnificent promises. So not only has he given us his power to to live this way, he's given us his word to understand it, he's given us promises to go along with it, he says, by which we also become, become partakers of partners mm-hmm. in his divine nature. Wow. So here, here's what we're, here's the essence of the, the mission of the guild is, is to create a renaissance, mm-hmm. the renaissance period, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, those, those men aren't around today. Uh, we're not having a renaissance anymore, and I think we can. Um, students, I want students to experience a renaissance in their god giftedness in mm-hmm. their artistic approach to mm-hmm. life, and their creative ideas. I want them to start thinking again and imagine outside the box. God, I, I don't think that people, God's people, are are imagining what really can be accomplished for Christ today. I, I just think that we're, we're, we're being held back by the, so much the things mm-hmm. that we see and the things that we hear. You know, Lot's righteous soul was vexed. 
from day to day by the things he saw and the things he heard. He didn't do those things. He just saw and heard them. And I think that's what's happening today. I think that the media, uh, the infiltration of images from Hollywood mm-hmm. has just really sedated us. So we, we're, we're going to have a renaissance of creative excellence that inspires one to know God intimately and proclaim him passionately. That's what we want to happen. We want students when they leave the guild to start new businesses, new ideas that will rescue um, girls into the, from the sex slave trade in India. We want children to think about how we can best, how we can reach the single moms and their children who mm-hmm. are fatherless. We want them to reach into or- we, we want them to help the elderly who have nobody. How can we do this through our creative gift to gift that God has given to us? And so, so that's it's really what the guild is all about. And bottom line is that I want students to experience the unexplainable. So I say this. If your life is explainable, then something's missing. Because yeah. you still there? Yeah. I'm losing you. I'm here. Oh, okay. I don't want to Your picture kind of got, okay. your picture got frozen. <laughs> I'm glad okay. I got you. Okay. So, okay. So, so I want, I want the guild to be a time where we all experience a, um, Experience God on an infinite level we've never experienced before. Mm-hmm. So we realize that we are living an unexplainable mm-hmm. life. That something mm-hmm. happened this week that's unexplainable. Mm-hmm. And we take that with us the rest of our lives. That every wow. day needs to be a day where, where we're exercising faith. And so, John, so with that concept, with that idea, I'm talking to Dr. Mm-hmm. Lawler, yeah. and, and I'm talking to him about I got John, like I got John Fornoff teaching script writing. Kathy Buchanan's coming teaching script mm-hmm. writing. And he's teaching the theology, uh, the Torah is theological symphony. And as I'm mm-hmm. talking to him, I'm realizing something that God has given us his written word, right? Yeah. How can we inspire students to take God's creatively written word now mm-hmm. through crafting story through what you and Kathy will be teaching them? How can we join the two together? to exalt God and create stories in such a way that the world will be able to hear and receive the redemption that God has for them. And so, as you and Kathy are are teaching the students this week, what are some of the highlights that the students can expect from your classes? I want to cover uh, what's, what's really fun about this year is uh, both Kathy and I are going to be joining together, and so we're going to play off of each other as we teach the writing aspect. So we're going to be taking from the very beginning. If you're having trouble, um, like, just getting started, how do you get started? You know, how do you, how do you face that blank page? We'll talk through that. What, what, do you, what do you do? And a lot of it is about your walk with God. I mean, your walk with God informs any kind of artistry you have, whether it's photography, whether it's film, whether it's writing. So number one is is to find what is God's passion. If you can, if you're sensing God's passion, like one of my favorite movies, Terrace of Fire. Okay, he says uh, the, the runner there. He says, "I was made to run, and when I run, I feel His pleasure." That's what we want you to experience as a student. So whatever field you've chosen, um, whether it's writing, or filmmaking, uh, culinary arts, whatever it is, that as you launch out into it and do it with excellence, you can feel God's pleasure. So we're going to talk about the spiritual aspect, how that informs your writing. Then we're going to talk about what makes a great story. Why are we good stories anyway? Why are we doing that? Well, we do it because Jesus did it. Jesus, that's how he conveyed the most powerful kingdom concept. What's the story? And those stories have stuck. Have, have has lasted through the centuries. He's an amazing, amazing storyteller. You talk to a person in the world, you mention the words prodigal son. And they'll know what it means. That's a person in the world. Not even a believer. Because Jesus' stories, they stick, they stick in your heart. They stick with you through the centuries. We're talking about, okay, why, why do we need a story? What, what, what makes a great story? How do you, how do you like, make great, great characters? How do you put a twist in your story? What do you do to really, what's, what's the passion behind the story? So we'll talk about that. And the cool, the coolest part of all is we're going to take these, these things we're going to teach you. Oh, Jackie's also going to teach on character. She teaches a whole seminar on how do you, uh, when you're holding characters for your story, uh, interview them. If you have a whole interview, how do you interview your characters and, and make them come alive? She is excellent at teaching character. She can teach a whole seminar right on that itself. So we're going to talk back and forth. Also, how do we collaborate? Something Kathy and I learned with uh, working with obviously working with Lamplight or Theater is how we collaborate as writers. That is really important. You're not in a you're not just by yourself 
writing in a room, that kind of thing. You need to collaborate with others and make the product that much more We're talking about something mysterious called the tertiary squid. So we're going to grow that. But the coolest part, part of all is we're going to take all this teaching, okay, you're going to be writing down that kind of stuff, and we're going to put it to use, like, that afternoon. So you're going to take everything you're learning, and you're going to put it right there. You're going to put it on the page. You're going to learn about sound design, and you're going to put it, you're going to put it into your sound press, and you're going to learn about music. Put it in there. You're going to actually put it into use and come home with something. You can say, hey, mom, dad, my friends, whatever. Look, that's what we did. That kind of thing. And that's, that's the coolest aspect of all. John, let's, let's talk about the tertium quid, because we've experienced it. And how many, yeah. how many dramas? We've done 17 dramas today. How many times have we experienced tertium quid? It happens at least once a story. And when it does, it is, you can't orchestrate it. You can't say, uh, okay, Mark, uh, I'm going to call you at 315 and we'll have a tertium quiz. Okay? <laughs> uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. It happens when we, we live out the verse that says, submit yourself one to another. Something that you've done, Mark, that I, I, if I could just, I just thank you for this, is, um, you're in charge. You're the executive producer. So at any time you can say, uh, look, it's, my way or the highway. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to do it this way, and John, thanks for your writing stuff, but really, this is what, I, this is what we're going to do. You have chosen to, uh, you're, you're listening to me, I'm listening to you, we're submitting to each other, and actually we're submitting to God, we're kind of, you're the ultimate decision maker. But what you're doing is, and I respect that, but you're also saying, I want to hear what John has, this might be a little bit different for our time, I want to hear what John has brought to, brought to the table, and I'm going to listen to you that. So here's a quick example. Um, <laughs> this is something we've we talked about. It is, um, I, I'll take a third night of the Splendid Way. We're working on, on, on that one. And um, we're on the last episode, and we're going through our notes, you know, how we go through the note process, you know. And sometimes it's like 11 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock, whatever. We're going through it. One, and, two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting worried because at each checkpoint we have, um, I say, Mark, I'm having a little trouble with your note here. And you say, oh, it's okay. Go ahead. It's like, uh-oh. And next note was, oh, that's okay, John. It's all right. It's like, what? You know, like, you're being really easy. And you saved it up before the last thing. Okay, I've been saving up for the last battle here. And it was, like, for the last thing. It's, John, I'm sorry. we got to do it this way. I'm sorry. I'm not, we're just going to do it this way. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> so we prayed through it. We prayed through it. And then I was thinking, it's got to be this way. We're thinking it's got to be this way. When we prayed, all of a sudden, I started seeing something new. You started seeing something new. And we came up with a third something, the tertium quid, that never would have happened if we had just stuck to our guts. We learned to submit to each other, and God came through, and it came to be an amazing ending. It never would have happened if we hadn't had that process, if we hadn't collaborated. So, there you go. Yeah, I, I got a little bit of but, um um, disruption on my screen here. No one is that uh, happening on, on everybody's screen. John, are you still? Um, I hope you here. It could be me personally. So, so you can hear me. You can hear me fine. No, no I can hear you. Yeah. Sometimes you'll, you'll do a little interrupt and then you talk really fast, like the mouse, and then you go back to your mouse. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, I, I didn't hear anything you said for those last twenty seconds. But I'm, okay. hoping the, I'm hoping the audience did because that was just solely what I wanted them to hear. Um, the church and quid is is an experience, yes, when we submit to one another. And that's something really that you taught me. Um, I don't think that I um, – I don't think I've ever worked with anybody. And usually the people that I've worked with over the last 30 years that have a little bit of a, you know, high intensity to them that they really love what they do and they're passionate about what they do, but there's got to be someone who is the leader, and the buck stops there. Yeah, and, exactly right. Um, and so that's been my role for the past 30 years. And 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 usually when someone comes at me head on, um, I usually I usually don't give in. Usually that makes me makes me um, <coughs> take my stand all the more firmly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you did something different with me. And so this is the first time in my lifetime I've ever worked with somebody that not only yielded, but you said, Mark, if, if I just give in and give you your way, you know, I'm going to fight you if I believe in something. I'm going to fight you until the point where you say, I've made a decision. I'm not going to go that direction. Um, and so you're going to have to yield to this. But you said something to me. You said, but I love you too much 
to give in to you too easily. He said, and so yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to fight you on this until you really understand how important it is to go in this other direction. And when you said that to me, that really made me realize you're not in this for the money. You're not in this just to have your way or produce a story for your way. You're in this because you believe that God has designed relationships in such a way that it reflects who the Father and Son is in real life. And, uh, and I think that, that to me is the ultimate experience, not what we produce. It's not the ends justifying the means. Um, it's really, it's really two people, three people, four people, five people. It's a group of people working together to really reflect um, the qualities of God. And when we do that, when we, like you said, submit one to another, when we do that, God gave us something that was beyond what either of us thought. And I'll never forget the time you called me. You called me at <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and you, you were in tears, or I don't know what you were yeah. in, but you were in a trance yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I kind of didn't know who I was or where I was when you called, but uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, you've been working on Sir Night with one way, and, um, and you said, I, uh, God spoke to me, and I had it. And it was something that we were, we were working on. This was not in the script. This was not in the original script. And to this very day, I still think it's the number one line in the mm-hmm. story. In fact, it's so good, I am going to put it in the book. Um, yeah. I'm not going to give you royalties, but I'm going to put it in the book. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> remember, I'm not in it for the money. I remember you mentioned that. That was one of the things you checked out there. Okay. But, uh, let, let, let me quote what you said. Um, I, I have to do it in somewhat of a, an Irish accent. You'll have to forgive me for the accent. It's not going to be very good, but I'll try it. Okay. It's actually Scottish, but go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Scottish, sir. Pretty much the same. <laughs> the righteous are not determined by the fall, but by the rising from the fall. Rise, Sir Constant. Rise. Mm-hmm. And um, then you were going through a very dark time in your life, and you said that God just gave you that. And that really spoke to me. And that is so true. The righteous are not determined by the fall, but by the rising from the fall. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, I want the guild week to be a week of that. No matter what has happened in our lives, uh, God wants to use us as a uh, stroke of grace. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we are we are deceitful and desperately wicked above all, and we can't mm-hmm. even realize the extent of it, according to Jeremiah. But we have such an amazing God who doesn't see our sin, but sees the blood of His Son. Mm-hmm. He sees the redeeming purchase of His Son. It says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross because he looked for what he was going to get, his bride. He looks at us as this mm-hmm. amazing bride, John. He looks beyond the sinner and the sin and sees his son and sees mm-hmm. the new bride of his son. And that's amazing. You know, when we get to see people, when we see people not for who they are, who God wants them to become, uh, then you know you can uh, work with them. Then down. you know you can, okay. there's great potential okay. there. And, yeah, and I think that's what the Guild is all about. Um, another thing, John, that you taught me at the Guild, um, and you mentioned this when you were talking to Kathy and Todd yesterday, um, <clears throat> you, you were talking about um, serving. Ex- explain that. What, 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 what's, behind, what's behind that kind of serving? <clears throat> I am very, um, very honored to be the producer for a Lamplighter Theater. And uh, some people, um, <laughs> some people, when they get the idea of producer, they think, oh, there's a big team. You get to order people around and tell them what to do. And you get to get the money and you get to do this and you get to, you know, do all this kind of stuff. And to me, that's going to be a whole new definition of producer. It's servant. And, and it's like a, it goes back to Jesus. He says, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, you get on your knees and start washing feet. He says, learn to be a servant. So what a producer does, he serves the people in the production. So the role of a producer is to get the obstacles out of the way, help to stay one step ahead of everybody, not because, like, um, hey, I'm Mr. Big Leader. It's like you'll get your one step ahead so you can get those obstacles out of the way so your team can go run them forward. You're paving a highway for them. And so the job of a producer is to serve them, to serve the production team, to get, get obstacles out of the way and serve those people and enable them and empower them to do what God has called them to do and do with excellence. So so when when students come to the guild, students of all ages, from sixteen mm-hmm. to ninety years old, when they come to the guild, one of the things I, I have to stress before they get there, um, is that 
you know, you're going to learn about script writing and voice acting, sound design, music, engineering. You're going to learn about biblical theology. You're going to learn all of that. Mm-hmm. But what I think really changes people's lives, and, and we, we do a survey every year at the students that attend it, mm-hmm. and the, the, the two things that stand out the most of what influenced them eternally the most was, number one, the time they spend on the Word of God mm-hmm. while they were there early morning, and secondly, the, the things that they learned from the teachers, not from the classroom, but from their lives. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with the teachers serving them and taking the time mm-hmm. to minister to their souls. Those are the two mm. main things that uh, that really influenced the students that were there, and I, and it, it's it's such a rare occasion, you know, to to get a John Fornoff and a Kathy Buchanan and a Todd Bastie, a John Doric, a Dr. John Lawler, um, to get a um, Christopher Parkening. This year we got Christopher Parkening, who's considered one of the greatest classical guitarists in the world. He's going to be wow. teaching. He's only going to be playing his guitar once or twice. Um, unless mm-hmm. we could really give him, like, a couple standing ovations and keep him going. You know? <laughs> okay, we'll work on that. But his, his back has been hurting. But he's coming to teach on the yeah. love of excellence. And wow. there's something that, that really, there was a driving force behind that man's life early on. You know, he got saved later in life, and, and, it was, and he had given up the classical guitar. And then he came back to it with a whole new um, fervor and, um, and love for the music. It was because of what God had done with his heart and life, understanding a love for excellence. Now, mm-hmm. um, we have uh, Dale Al- Alquist coming. I believe he teaches at Yale. He's going to be doing a monologue on G.K. Chesterton. Oh, I've heard wow. it. Wow. I can't it wait to hear that. Yeah. Blew me away. Wow. Yeah, it just blew me away. Wow. Uh, we have um, Ken Whining. He's going to be teaching photography. If you've ever seen Ken's photographs, it's, it's, amazing. it's beyond compare. Yeah. Um, we have um, Joel Jost coming. He's going to be teaching filmmaking. You know, everyone loves Joel. What an amazing, oh, yeah. man, not only man of God he is, but what, what creative talent he has. Yeah. And we have the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra Springs Quartet plus some accompaniment um, instruments coming on, yeah. uh, on Wednesday night. Uh, right now, we're looking at an artist. Uh, I don't really even want to say her name, um, but it's a very popular um, artist on the radio these days. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure because we've got so much packed into this week already. We're going to go whitewater rafting um, wow. with with a whole bunch of you know hundred students uh, down the Genesee River. It's really going to be quite the week. Um, Six o'clock in the morning we start. Um, we got all the dramatic arts, the visual arts. Oh, we have um, uh, Lisa is coming from Detroit. She is an amazing artist. One of our yeah. one of our um, yeah. um, one of our um, staff here, Abigail, went did a uh, apprenticeship with her over um, over the winter. She came back. She came back changed with her love for art. Wow. And so those wow. that are those that desire, aspire to be um, painters, illustrators. Um, mm-hmm. I would like to this year, John, collaborate with our. We didn't do this in the past. I'd like to collaborate with our visual art students and our dramatic art students, so that maybe they can start thinking collaboratively of, hey, if I was going to do a cover for a CD or a mm-hmm. cover for a script or a book mm-hmm. for, maybe they can be doing something there at the guild and after. It. That's something you just hit on, that the, the, the amazing thing that happens at the Guild is the friendships, the relationships, mm-hmm. it, those connections that you make. As you're studying about writing or photography or culinary arts or whatever, you're going to be talking to someone with a similar passion right next to you. And also, you're going to have a friendship, and you're going to be talking to them after the Guild, and you're going to encourage each other. You want to go into business together. This is how it actually happened out of the Guild, that people started businesses, they started collaborations, they started partnerships, they started writing together. That's part of the wonderful, beautiful thing. And that is what I would say. It's something you call the unexplainable. It's the, it's the, uh, it's that unexplainable factor. You can't, you can't quantify it. I don't even put it in a brochure, but it happens when you come to the deal. It's, it's God. It's when He shows up and He does, when He, when, <laughs> when you're around His nature and you're around people that love Him and, and adore Him and you can sense that, that, that mm-hmm. worship of Him through the truth, through the reason us to worship Him. And you sense that. There's a God factor there, that unexplainable that happens at the beginning of every year. And it imparts something in you that's eternal. And it just, it just stays with you. It puts a fire in you. It, it, I, can't, I can't explain it. Unexplainable is a great word for it. But it happens to you when you come to the deal. And it, mm-hmm. it, it, just, it marks you for life. It does. A, it really does. Yeah. So, John, in, in closing here, um, so we have a new location, Grand Canyon of the East, the Western State Park, uh, yeah. Western New York. Yeah. 
Um, we have some unique things that are going to happen. We actually, we have, we have put some free time in there this year. Yeah, so what's the white space? Yeah, we just put uh, 15 minutes of white space in there. <laughs> 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 um, but we can go to that with you. This is great. I'm excited. But we have some leadership games that we're doing. Um, okay. So there's there's some unique things that are going to happen at the Guild that um, the environment itself. Now, you got to understand, this is what made me realize I was going to have the Guild at um, Lester State Park's Grand Canyon. I was up there. And I've been going there for years, just kind of toying with, do you think I could ever pull this off? You know, this is such a beautiful place, but, you know, it doesn't have the accommodations that we need, et cetera, et cetera. And then God gave us all of these accommodations. Like, they're right there, like within a mile of where we're going to be. All these hotels and bed and breakfast mm-hmm. and the cabins and the conference center and these houses. And then the park mm-hmm. gave us everything to use. It was really a miracle. So not only that, but I was standing on what would be considered the most beautiful place in the park. It's called Inspiration Point, so we're looking two waterfalls. Mm-hmm. And I turned behind me, and there's this huge eight-foot rock and a plaque on it. And, and in this rock, it says, um, God, i gotta, I got to get this right. Um, maybe no one uh, can help me here. God, oh, what's the, uh, God rock for us. yeah, God rock for us, this scene beyond compare. So, so here I am standing there, and, I, and this is at a place where, you know, God's not really being recognized. And I turn, mm-hmm. and there it is. God wrought for us. God wrought. His beauty beyond compare. Yeah. His beauty beyond compare. Mm-hmm. And that's just really spectacular to see. Mm-hmm. So this is going to give our visual arts students an unbelievable place to paint from. Um, every mm-hmm. morning at 6 o'clock, we're going to meet there to inspire students with the awesomeness of God. I mean, the power mm-hmm. of God is going to be seen everywhere around us. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is a time I believe that people will never forget, and I believe that um, there's more to come with the Guild. We're not sharing everything in this particular interview. Mm-hmm. I'll share a little bit more in the next one. We're going to be um, interviewing uh, Dr. John Lawler. Um, yeah. I haven't need to talk with him yet. Yeah, we're going to be interviewing mm-hmm. um, um, our culinary chef. Um, we're going to try to get Todd up here, so we've got a few more to do, and I'll be sharing a little bit more each time of what um, is going to be happening at the 2014 Guild. That's great. Mark, I understand just, can, uh, people that are watching now can actually ask questions like, through the chat sure, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've actually got a couple right here. Um, oh, okay. So if, if, if you want, um, yeah, somebody wants to know if the students, um, if the, uh, the students that are doing music composition, they just want to know if they will actually write, you know, help write the music. Um, with John Doric or whatever for the, uh, the audio dramas that are done in the last Yes, those students that um, have the time and the agonizing relentless pursuit of of um, going the extra mile will be allowed to do that. But they're going to have their they're going to have their um, hands full of doing a lot of other work that day. So if they if they don't mind not sleeping a lot, they'll be able to do that. <laughs> what else, Nolan? Any other questions? Yeah, somebody wants to know just um, what's what are some things that um, the students can do to prepare for the guild? Um, you know, time in prayer, uh, certain reading material, whatever. Yeah, that's great. Um, here's here's how to prepare for the guild. Yeah, you can be praying, pray for all the teachers, pray for all the staff. This is a um, Herculean effort preparing for everything that's going on at the Guild. We've been preparing since um, early January. Um, so pray for all of us. We're kind of out of breath. Um, but it is worth it in the end when we see the result. Um, for, if you want to prepare um, things to read, you want to read First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1. You want to memorize verses 1 through 10. Second Peter 1, chapters, verses 1 through 10. Memorize that. And then um, read Proverbs 22. Um, Exodus chapters 30 through 33, actually Ex- Exodus chapters 33 through 36, read that. Read second, uh, first Kings chapter 10. Let me go over those again. Second Peter 1, 1 through 10, memorize it. Um, Proverbs 22, first Kings chapter 10, Exodus chapters 33 through 36. Um, I'd memorize Jeremiah 33, 3, and Joshua 1, 8 and 9. Those would be great. Places. Oh, also read Romans chapter 4 and chapter 5. While you're at it, you might as well just finish the whole Bible. <laughs> <laughs> four now, right, John? Well, by the way, uh, George Mueller read through the Bible four times every year. 
from the time he was 71 to the time he was 92. That's what made him a great man of faith. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Any and other? Okay. Go ahead, John. Um, it's something I really appreciate just, just about knowing you and you is your love for the word. You you um you love God's word, and not just that, but you uh, God's giving you insight how to dig into it and how to pull out that treasure. That's part of that fun time, and to me, uh, is just find the treasure, like in the devotion time in the morning. And 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 now you're saying your your mentor is going to be there to kind of show you how yeah. to feel the tools to use to yeah. get get that treasure. The, the Bible is just as we know, it's just chock full of treasure. But how do you get to it? Yeah, John, when they hear Dr. Waller speak, I'm telling you, when when I was in class, I used to leave. Well, I used to leave with a headache, um, <laughs> only, only only because I did not want to miss one word that he was speaking that time. Wow. And I have never seen a man more prepared in my life. He taught me this principle. He said, Mark. He said, when you teach, you teach out of a cup that overflows. And never from the cup itself. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. He wants he wants our research and our study and our love and passion for God to exude to to gush out over the cup that we live out of. So picture our lives. Picture that as the cup. It's what mm-hmm. we put into ourselves. Our studies, our our prayers, our love for God. The more that you put in. He wants that to gush out, and out mm-hmm. of that, that's good. we teach others, not from the cup itself. Yeah, that's, that's I, I, I can't say enough for Dr. Lawler to be speaking of. That's, so that's something that uh, I experienced personally at the Guild as, as a teacher. And first year I did, I, I taught some, I taught you know, some writing, I taught stuff and work with people, and a lot of horrible experiences writing. Not so much as teaching right from my first year, but the students, when they came there, they were so tuned into God and tuned into, like, the eager to hear. The, the guilt brought the teacher out of me. And it's just like, and in fact, not only that, it gave me a passion for teaching. I love to teach. Now, that came from the guilt. Because I, I love what God does. It's not just what I'm saying. I'm, I get kind of bored with that. But what I love is when God says something, when, when, when there's something that's that, that unexplainable thing we're talking about, when I see a, a, a new concept in the Bible that I want to share, or something, like, as I'm talking, all of a sudden, I've got a new insight. That's those those God moments that happen there, that happen at the deal, that are just just amazing, and and you take those home with you. And that's that's giving me a passion for for what happens there. The connection with God, a connection with the students. Um, John, this year, um, I don't know. Um, we we decided to do something a little different. We were going to give an incentive uh, for those that are attending the guild this year. We thought we'd go above and beyond. It's already a fulfilling week as it is, and we don't need incentives to get people to attend the guild. But here's what we decided to do. We're going to um, we're, we're going to choose five students to go randomly, um, but not so much randomly. We, we may choose students who are you know that are, live kind of relentlessly and, and really are going for it. You know, they stand out. But we're going to choose five students, and some of them are going to pick randomly. Some of them are going to pick because of their their initiative. But mm-hmm. they're going to be allowed to write an article, and we're going to let them work with you and Kathy as they write this article. And it is going to be published, and 60,000 people will be reading it minimal. So that can be used for their portfolio. That will be a huge uh, opportunity. We're also going to give them an opportunity um, to work with us in the next Lamp Under Theater drama and the, in the actual writing of the script. So, like, when you and I or Kathy um, are writing a script, you know, they'll mm-hmm. be able to – do help with the outline, help with the script itself, and see how it emerges, see how it, how it evolves as we write the script. That would be a great opportunity. Um, we're also going to give them an opportunity to audition in the mm-hmm. next Lamplighter Theater drama, mm-hmm. and we're also going to send them a complete download of all of the Lamplighter Theater dramas so they can hear some of the um, amazing creativeness, and we'll point out to them some of the uniqueness, like, for example, um, Peter, uh, um, Peter from Peter Morton from Peter London. Morton, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out the famous um, one line that he gave in Basket of Flowers, where I almost fell off my chair and had to pay five hundred dollars for that. You told me to trust you. The world birds would have wings. We're going to help you for that. Um, but also, I would like to just today. This will be the first time for you as well. Um, announce something that's really exciting. Um, you and Kathy just wrote 
or writing two of our next four episodes of Theater Dramas, um, Under the Earth and The Giant Killer. Uh, how are we doing with The Giant Killer? Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to show you. It's, I got, I got, yeah, it's really cool. You'll love it. I okay. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm loving it. I'll put it that way. And, and then we want to hurry up and do that one in an illustrated book. And yeah. so we got our artist. My, and my, my goal right now is to, within the next year, have our internship program in full swing here so that we can have our illustrators, people working in um, in the audio, people working in um, in web. But here's something I want to announce. I just found a book. I just finished it, and it's going to go to print any day. It's called, I don't even know if I want to give the title, but I will. It's called The um, the Haunted Room. Mm. Okay. John, it is the best book I've ever read in my life. Wow. Wow. And you, you've heard me say that before. I, I've heard you say that before, but you know it. It's, 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 <laughs> and, and I'm sure there are other books that are the best books I've ever read, but this one will do more in the kingdom of God, I believe, than any book we've ever published. And wow. it's, it's so powerful. Um, I would like to move that up and start that immediately. Um, in fact, as soon as the guild is over, or maybe we can find some students to help us, as soon as the guild is over, I'd like to start that immediately and, and be in the studio um, by October. You're going to make it a drama, then. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first time I'm hearing this. This is this, oh, this yeah. is how it happens, by the way, if you're watching. This is Mark will get really shy and say, and John, I need it in two weeks. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> So, can, you tell me, can you tell me a little about the story? Just give me a little, a little hint. I can. And, uh, and so this goes along with the incentives. And so the mm-hmm. students who are going to be chosen, um, five of them will be chosen to come with us to London to, uh, uh, to help record the, the drama. Yeah. Now, yeah. we're not paying for the expenses, but they'll get to work right. with the actors. They'll get to uh, participate in the drama, part of the administration process. It's, it's a life-changing experience over yeah. there. The story is about a... Um, family, uh, two brothers um, and a sister. She is a very godly young woman. Um, her brothers love the Lord, but all three of them have besetting sins. One particular besetting sin. The, 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 the young sister, she has the besetting sin of fear. The, um, the older brother, he has the besetting sin of pride. Mm-hmm. The, the younger brother, he has the besetting sin of foolhardiness. Doesn't mm-hmm. take things seriously. They um, they have to move. The mother the mother has been dead for years. Um, the father has um, just inherited this castle. They move mm-hmm. to the castle, and the, the the aunt who leaves them in her will this property has one condition that they never unbrick the bricked up room that is in the center of the house, stairs in the third story, and it is a room in where her husband supposedly died. Mm-hmm. And they don't, they don't want anyone ever to enter that room. So it's been bricked off all the way around. So in the center of this house, it, mm-hmm. it is this um, bricked off room. In the town, all the villagers, they believe that the room is haunted. And since no one's been there, they can hear people talking in the castle. And so this family, of course, doesn't believe in ghosts. And so they go there, and sure enough, there are voices coming from the room. And when you find out where these voices are coming from and who they really are and what they really have to do with these three besetting sins, um, our listeners, I believe, will be changed because all of a sudden you realize wow. that those besetting sins are in us. Wow. And wow, wow, wow. Yes. Very powerful. Oh, man. Yeah, it's man. Awesome. And it, John, it's more than that. I mean, there's kidnapping. There's there's plots to murder. There's, there's a hot how it catches on fire with someone who's kidnapped and tied inside. I mean, wow. it, it just goes on, and there's a twist and turn on every side. It's really a great story. Man, I can't wait to read this. Yeah, it's can, 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 can you send it my way? No, I'm not going to send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Well, listen, All right. John, it's been great spending time <laughs> with you, and um, we're looking forward to seeing you and Kathy and Todd and John and and all of the teachers at the Guild this year. And um, mm. if you could just have one closing statement, what would it be? Don't miss what God's about to do. Mm. Through you. That is an awesome statement. Wow, that is a great statement. Mm. Wow, don't miss what God is about to do through you. Yeah. Wow, John. 
that's a great statement. And I think in that statement, we'll give us over to no one. No one will let you close this evening. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, John. No one? All right. Yes, sir. Should we uh, close in prayer, you think? That'd be great. All right. That's great. Dear Father, uh, we just uh, thank you for this time with John and Mark and pray that you would um, use what everybody heard today um, in their lives. Thank you for um, both these men and for the influence that they already had on our Catskill students. And we pray that um, you would uh, work this year again at this year's guild and just um, be a tremendous inspiration uh, for the students and uh, even for all of the staff working there. Um, just pray that you would have your hand on this event and um, that you would help as we uh, prepare for it. Thank you, Father, and uh, help us to honor you well. In Jesus' name, amen. And then those that are interested in learning more can go to lamplightersguild.com. That's lamplightersguild.com. And um, they'll want to uh, sign up soon. We're going to take uh, 100 students. And um, this year, like I said, we're going to have three. Um, the Lamplighter Prius will be on Sunday. We're going to have a worship time. Dr. John Lawler is going to speak. And so um, I think the time to go to lamplighterguild.com, take a look at it. Um, our scholarships are... Um, are a little bit lower this year. Um, our price cost of the guild is much less. Um, this year it's actually more than less than half the price this year now that we've changed the, the locations. And so um, and if you have any questions, um, you can contact us at um, uh, mail at lamplighter.net or go to lamplighterguild.com. Thanks again for joining us. God bless you all. Yeah, and you can call us at the office here and ask Ask for me, and I can answer any questions you have. Our number uh, is 570-585-1314. So it's 570-585-1314, or they can dial toll-free 888-A-GOSPEL. That's 888-A-GOSPEL. Thanks, Nolan, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. Bye. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Oh, and also, this is going to be available for um, for recorded, right? It's going to be recorded later? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks, Dad. I'll talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. Enjoy. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.